Hey, what's up? My name is Matt Brockman. I'm going to teach you how to play with a great trumpet sound. Oh, that's easy. You just use more air. Before we begin, please make sure that you subscribe with notifications on if you're new around here. Because I make videos all the time such as trumpet arrangements, trumpet tutorials, gear reviews, and so much more. And also, hit that like button so I don't cry myself to sleep tonight. And also, I have a trumpet sound guide, and the best part about it is that it's absolutely free. So click the link in the description before it goes away. And if you watch all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to tell you about a top secret resource that is going to take your trumpet playing to the next level and beyond. But don't skip where I will steal all the water in your toilet. All right, let's get into it. So there are two approaches when it comes to producing a tone on the trumpet. There is a mainstream approach, and then there's what I call a black sheep approach that is very rarely taught and not many people know about it. So first, let's talk about the mainstream approach. I call it the use more air approach. And that's probably a phrase that you've heard several times throughout your journey of learning the trumpet, I assume. And that's because it's very, very widely taught thanks to a lot of famous pedagogues such as Arnold Jacobs. And you may have also heard some of the following pedagogical suggestions throughout your journey. Use more air. Take a big breath. Support. Support the air. Breathe down below. Breathe down below. More air. Blow through the end of the phrase. More air. Faster air. 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour. Faster air. More air. And many believe that this approach works because, I mean, it makes sense. It's all centered around air and wind, and the trumpet is a wind instrument. So by increasing our wind, it makes the trumpet sound better, right? Without air and wind, the trumpet won't make a sound, right? And that part is true in a very literal sense. The trumpet is not going to make a sound if we don't use air and blow into it. And because of this, it's led a lot of people to believe that in order to improve our trumpet sound and improve our playing, we need to increase the quality and quantity of our air and this led to a lot of different pedagogical methods like the use of breathing bags and the use of like this weird tube thing that you blow into to make the ball go up and you have to keep the ball up or the breathing gym which is like a very literal workout for your lungs where you're doing like exercises and like cardio stuff with the focus of increasing your lung capacity and strengthening up, strengthening up your lungs. If you've never heard of the breathing gym, look it up. And I've worked with many educators throughout my career. I studied music education, but I ended up not going that route of becoming a full-time music educator. But I've worked with a lot of middle school band directors, a lot of high school band directors, and also I've worked with a lot of students who are studying to become full-time music educators. And the breathing approach is what is taught 99 plus percent of the time. So what did I see when a student was struggling to produce a sound? They were told to use more air. Use more air. What did I see when a student couldn't make it to the end of a phrase? They were told to take a bigger breath. They didn't take a big enough breath. What did I see when a student was struggling to maintain a pitch? They were told to support. Support the air. Play centered. Support the air. And what did I see when students were using weak phrasing? They were told to blow through to the end of the phrase blow through to the end of the phrase. And it was the same school of thought that I was taught in my earlier years. Just like you probably, I was also taught to use more air, to breathe, to breathe down below, take a big breath, all those different things. And I really couldn't imagine any other way because this was so mainstream. It's what every single person was teaching. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that air is important. Obviously air is what makes the trumpet work. It's like driving a car without gas, you need air. But there is more to playing trumpet than just air. There's actually an entirely different approach that most people don't know about. And I'm not saying one approach is right, one approach is wrong, or any variation of that. But what I'm saying is that the use more air approach is only going to get you so far. So do this for me. Think about your trumpet playing ability as three different checkpoints. Checkpoint A is beginner. You're maybe just been playing for a couple weeks, a few months, up to a year. You're still at the beginning stages. You're still figuring most things out. Here's checkpoint B. Checkpoint B is just a moderate average level player. Um, you you're, can do most things on the trumpet, but just your average. And then there's checkpoint C, which is a professional level player, someone who gets paid to play the trumpet. So if you want to get from checkpoint A to checkpoint B, the Arnold Jacobs use more air approach is probably enough to get you there. But what you'll find is that you'll be stuck at checkpoint B for quite a while. But if you want to get from checkpoint B to checkpoint C, you need to add something to your playing 
to take it to the next level. So do you know what the definition of insanity is? In the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting different results. Eventually, you're gonna stop seeing results with the use more error approach. You're gonna come to a deadlock. In my college days, I met a certain trumpet teacher that changed my life completely and changed the way I look at the trumpet altogether. So he was in town temporarily just for a few months and my old professor was somewhere else so I studied with him for a little bit and after a few lessons with him he told me something that really kind of concerned me in the way I look at my playing he told me that there was something that really bothered me about my sound and that I really need to make some changes if I want to play at the level that I want to play at I think his exact words were I am bothered by your sound I might be wrong about that it was a long time ago but it was kind of scary to hear that. And speaking of scary, he made me do something that was very uncomfortable, depending on your personality. He made me sing. And that's something that honestly terrifies me. And this brings me to the black sheep approach to playing the trumpet. Remember I told you there's the mainstream approach, which is the use more air approach. And then there's the black sheep approach. And the black sheep approach is using singing as a model for playing trumpet. It's a vocal model. So why do I call it the black sheep approach? Well, the old idiom goes is that in a flock of sheep, you will almost always see white sheep. But in one very, very rare instance, you'll see a black sheep. And I call it the black sheep approach because 99% of people are using the Arnold Jacobs use more air approach. But there's this less than 1% of trumpet players who are using this very rare approach, AKA it's like a black sheep. And besides the guy who I just told you about and myself, I can really only think of three trumpet players who I know about that use the black sheep approach. And they're sort of the people who actually pioneered this. And those three trumpet players are Mark Gould, Jim Pandolfi, and Peter Bond. And I actually got the pleasure of studying with one of them. I studied with Peter Bond for a little bit. So what do these three names have in common? All three of these trumpet players are legends on the instrument, but they all worked in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. So they were surrounded by and played with some of the best opera singers of all time. So they all played with on a very daily regular basis with some of the best opera singers of our time, five days a week, 12 months a year. And it makes perfect sense. Opera singers are arguably the masters of tone production. They can create a huge resonant sound that's beautiful, it's big, it can fill up an entire room and without the use of any amplification and they do it with just what's inside their body but something important to realize is that opera singers function almost exactly like trumpet players they use air they use their lungs they breathe just like us but what separates a professional opera singer from an amateur one if the amateur singer just uses more air are they going to sound like the professional yeah i don't think so or just take a bigger breath and you'll sound professional I don't think so. It takes a lot more than just take a bigger breath to become a very professional, powerful singer. And that's why I argue that it takes way more than just take a bigger breath and use more air to play the trumpet well. And one of these trumpet players, Jim Pandolfi, pioneered a whole system and an entirely different approach to the trumpet, which involves taking opera singers as a literal model for producing rich, dark tones on the trumpet. And it actually translates very, very well. I applied it to my own playing and I've gotten excellent results from it. And after adopting this approach to my playing, I was able to transform myself into like a collegiate college level musician to a professional one who's been able to be hired and get paid for gigs. I was able to work full time in a military band as a trumpet player. It really changed my life, this approach. And I'm not saying that to brag, I'm just saying this so that you take it seriously. And if you'd like to learn more about this black sheep vocal approach, I have a resource for you that goes way, way, way in depth into this topic. So if you made it this far in the video, I can tell that you're very serious about your trumpet playing. So I put together a brand new trumpet method book just for you. There's a link in the description. And I teach about this black sheep approach all throughout the book. It has almost 100 pages of content. It's got very, very in-depth explanations on how the process works. And also it's got exercises that I call trumpet tone builders, hence the name of the book, trumpet tone builders, because it's all geared around producing a professional quality sound. And it's got clickable video links that support the content. So get in on that before the sale ends.
All right, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks so much to the Patreon donors for making this video possible. On your way out, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to turn those notifications on so you know when I release new videos. And if you like this video, check out the next video in the end screen in which I talk about the vocal approach and breathing with the vocal approach. See you there.